Hey there, and welcome to another session with the Dental Advisor. And today we're talking about photography. All right. Now I have in front of me my Nikon camera uh, with a macro lens or micro lens, as they call it, and a ring flash. And you know what? If it wasn't so expensive, I just throw it away. But I can't. So I'm going to just leave it there gently because I probably need you at some point in time. But right now. It's exciting times because everything's moved over to mobile phone photography and this is now my camera 8 megapixels and all I need to attach is a ring flash that you can pick off Amazon or Aliexpress or Wish or wherever you shop um, for about it's anywhere between 500 to 1000 rupees that's all it is and it's connected via USB you can recharge it it gives you a pretty bright light and it slips over the lens like so amazing so before we get into how we use this let me just show you the stuff that we have over here so what I have in front of me is a huge array of some black stuff some shiny stuff more black stuff and a phone and a flash or oh, beauty flash that's what they call it I've got a patient over here who's going to not say anything while I take photographs right so let's go through the black stuff over here these are known as contrasters contrasters provide a nice black background against which you can take some fancy photographs I will show you how each of these contrasters work so here you have um, an orthodontic contraster it helps you take occlusal photographs and your side profiles um, so how exactly you go about it is by opening the patient's mouth and placing the contraster like so so in effect what happens is that the gingival area around the teeth gets knocked out I mean, you can use this. This is another version of this occlusal contract contraster. Sorry, uh, this is another version of the occlusal contraster for small teeth, for uh, bigger jaws, and for elephants. Uh, sorry, uh, for major adults. But basically, uh, that's how it goes. It works the same principle. It goes either this way, or you can go around the lingual area, like so right now this portion of the contraster is used for taking your side profile and it's also used for blocking out the tongue so if you can imagine this there's a tongue over here and you place the contraster in like so and take a photograph you can get to see these four or five teeth really clearly without the tongue interference over there um, they're also good at taking side profile photographs and what you do is you put the contraster into the buckle cheek space on the other side so like so and if you take a picture of the profile view from this side you're going to get a nice black background against which you can take a lovely picture you also have contrasters for the palette um, this is something from a company called BioClear, which also acts as a measuring tool for making your incisors and smile designing, etc. But one place is blank, which acts as a palatal contraster. So you place it in the palate like so and angle it forwards so that these pictures that you take off the front view over here come out absolutely gorgeous. Uh, it also works on the lingual side and it goes in like this and you can take your pictures brilliantly. All right, now let's talk a little bit about dental mirrors. Dental mirrors have to be front surface mirrors. They're not like the mirrors that you comb your hair in. They're front surface mirrors and one way to check out whether a mirror is a front surface mirror or not is to take any instrument, in this case I've got a contraster, and just place it against the mirror and if the ends meet then you have a front surface mirror. 
So if you didn't have a front surface mirror, there'll be a little gap over here between one end and the other. When you look at the other one, front surface mirror. Third one, front surface mirror. Fourth one, front surface mirror. These three mirrors were what I was using for a long time, but now I have this one, which kind of works in all sorts of situations. Now let's look at which situation you'd want which mirror. This mirror is to take occlusals. So it goes in like this into the patient's mouth and you can get the occlusal view of the entire upper jaw like so or the lower jaw like so. Right? So um, these can be a little stuffy inside the patient's mouth so just be careful because if you push it back too far you can actually cause a little bit of a gag like <laughs> sorry okay <laughs> going on <laughs> these mirrors over here there are two mirrors they are for taking photographs of the profile views either the buck or the on the buckle side uh, like so you can just slip it into the buckle corridor push the cheeks away and you can take a nice uh, photograph of teeth in occlusion right and uh, this one works in a similar fashion just for teeth in occlusion the broad portion is again used for making um, your occlusal photographs right now why I've moved on to this particular angled mirror is that with this I can pretty much reach everywhere and take most photographs with just one mirror. So it's kind of supplanted all these three that I have. So if you want the side profile view, it goes like this. Or if you want to move the cheek away, you can flip it around and go like this because it's a double sided mirror. And similarly on this side, you can get a buckle side view of the occlusion or the profile view um, that you're looking for. Uh, with smaller mouths you can use this for taking occlusals or switch it around and you can use this quite effectively for taking occlusal pictures either this way or then that way. Right now, uh, we finally come to retractors and as you can see there are two kinds the one which is more circular and another one which is more elliptical what we've seen is that with the circular kind of retractors it doesn't pull back the cheeks as much as you need to and therefore the field of vision is kind of restricted with this kind of a design whereas this allows you to pull the cheek back a lot more and give you a much larger field of view as will be demonstrated by me okay now when it comes to placing a retractor don't try and go like this onto the patient's mouth straight off because sure enough you're gonna hook somewhere you're gonna hurt the patient so the easy way to do it is angle the tra retractor right down like this get into the lip area and then turn it to the side the same thing I'll do it again keep it vertical first and then just switch it to the side here we go so then that I want and I think they teach away and as you can see if I start to sing a song right now it would be pretty funny uh much larger, larger, L-A-R-G-E-R, -E larger field of view. All right, now let's see <laughs> what we can do with the foam setup here. I've got this, this is a flash, and it actually just pinches open and then hooks over the lens like so. You switch it on, and you have a nice little ring around it. Uh, you have an adjustment mode over here where you can change the different colors that you really want I think this is pretty fine right um, as far as your phone settings are concerned you switch it on 
get into camera mode and just zoom in to about twice the distance a little bit of zoom and then you're done flip this on and you're ready to shoot right so this is the setup that you actually need to start getting into mobile photography um, you need a camera on a phone this has about 8 megapixels it's a Nokia 3 Android um, a ring flash which you can pick off Amazon or Aliexpress or wherever it is which kind of just snaps over your camera uh, your phone basically and you need a mirror of some sort which is front surface this angle set of uh, it's kind of nice because it gets you accessibility into all the areas of the mouth and one mirror does the trick of everything. Contrasters, a lingual contraster, an occlusal contraster and a palatal contraster and a lingual, I mean from the inside when you want to take really nice beautiful photographs of your aesthetic anterior work, this contraster works really well over there. And finally, retractors of the elliptical design which allows you to push the cheeks apart a lot more than the conventional semilunar half circle uh, design that you normally have. And there you have it. This is another episode from The Dental Advisor. Uh, thanks for watching and if it was helpful in any way, subscribe, spread the word.